Good evening and welcome. You're watching Prime Time News on TV One, bringing you the news after some time. I'm Tarushan Kumar Singer. It's good to be back here in the studio. As usual, we are starting off with taking a look at your headlines for tonight. News first. Headlines. Main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. budget passed in parliament. Opposition alleges zero relief for the people. Undisclosed controversial LNG agreement tabled in parliament. Nicaragua cuts ties with Taiwan in favor of Beijing. Chinese fertilizer ship goes for arbitration. Concerns over flaws in agreement. Vaccination card to be made mandatory to visit public places. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Top story tonight, the budget 2022 was passed with a majority of 93 votes. 157 were cast in favor of it and 64 were cast against it. Speaker Mahindya Pabe Vadra endorsed the certificate on the appropriation bill for the fiscal year 2022 starting from the 1st of January 2022, ending on December 31st of 2022, later today. During the budget debate, opposition leader Sajid Premadas alleged that the government has taken measures to forcibly convert remittances from migrant workers and this will lead to serious issues. Two gazettes were published. The remittances that flow to Sri Lanka with goods and services revenue are forcibly converted. This is in effect from the 7th of December. Is this the solution given by the government for the foreign reserves issue? Leader of the House, this is a joke. The conversion is taking place where one US dollar is priced between 200 to 203 rupees. What would be the result? Sri Lanka will continue to lose remittances. You are targeting the hard work of migrant workers. Governor Nivad Kabra said there is no reason to fear and there is financial security. Since you have done extraordinarily well, the reserves have dropped to almost zero. Recently, Governor Cabral said by the end of the year, the foreign reserves will be increased to 3.5 billion US dollars. If he fails to achieve this target, will he continue to remain in this position? Recently, the finance minister went to India seeking US dollars. The government is now begging for US dollars rather than strengthening the country's financial and monetary policies. Go for talks with international organizations. If you do so, we will also support you to revive the economy from the present state it is in. We do not want to bankrupt the country. <laughs> You do not need to teach the Rajapaksas of managing the country's economy. If the law was enforced just like your government did, the two front rows from your side will be behind bars. Please be patient. Rupee by rupee, the funds will trickle in. If two-thirds is not enough, we will challenge to take two from your side to our side. He challenged to take two members. I challenged the minister to call for local government elections as those bodies will cease to function from the 9th of February. The artificial two-third majority that you have created inside the parliament does not exist in reality. Call for a mandate. You said the perpetrators in the bond scam will be prosecuted. They are roaming free. Did you extradite Arjuna Mahendran? Then there is the Easter attacks. But let me say this. Next comes a Premadasa government. Currently, we are facing a massive foreign exchange crisis. I admit that there is a crisis pertaining to our reserves as well. I would also like to say that we will pay every single dollar we have to pay within next year.
The Minister of Finance expressed his views as to why Sri Lanka receives less foreign exchange nowadays as well. We received 3.6 billion US dollars in 2019. However, we received only 100 million US dollars this year from tourist arrivals. The remittances have seen a drop of 6.1 billion US dollars as well. This is the reality. COVID-19 is not the sole reason for this. Another reason for this is the way you govern this country in the five years you were in power. The finance minister explained how Sri Lanka can increase its foreign revenue as well. We were able to increase our foreign reserves up to 1.7 billion US dollars from 1.2 billion US dollars in November this year. That is our plan. If we are to receive foreign remittances, locals must migrate for employment. I was questioned about foreign investments. We have big hopes for foreign investments. Sometimes we bring in foreign investors. People can misinterpret it as selling off our national assets to foreigners. These foreign investments do not come to Sri Lanka as fast as we think. There is also a possibility that these investors might approach other countries where they can earn faster. If I can speak a few words about the IMF, myself and Ajit Nivad Cabral went to the IMF soon after the war. Representatives of the IMF are here in Sri Lanka. We do not have any faith in the IMF. No, they're not other. I like no IMF. IMF the World Bank gave us the highest amount of money they have ever given a country. Agreements were signed with the Ministry of Highways and the World Bank gave us 500 million US dollars. Even though we cannot resolve this in one go, we will find a solution for this step by step. We can even set up our own reserves here in the country. Otherwise, we will have to beg them to grant us another year to settle our debt. We will not mar this country and hand it over. We will make this country and hand it over. <laughs> How can they settle the entire debt next year? That's a lie. Usually, even when foreign currency reserves are insufficient in our country, they will attempt to pay off the debt even by obtaining loans from foreign countries. Therefore, I don't think we won't be able to settle the loans at all. It is important to prevent these things. It is important to prevent three things. The first is to prevent a situation in which we can't pay our loans, a situation where we can't import fuel, and to prevent letters of credit issued by our banks from being rejected. <laughs> The budget for 2022 was passed today. But as the cost of living continues to mount, people say their lives are becoming more difficult. Price of goods including vegetables have skyrocketed. The wholesale cost of many vegetables stood at more than 300 rupees a kilo across several economic centers. Capsicum 600 to 700 rupees. Chilies 600 rupees. Carrots 300 rupees. Beans 350 rupees to 400 rupees, leeks 300 rupees, bitter gourd 400 to 450 rupees. Limited vegetables are supplied to the capitable economic center because of the fertilizer crisis. The situation in the retail market is no different. Our correspondents in Kandy reported that the cost of vegetables has crossed about 400 rupees. People in several areas, including Kandy and Colombo, have been badly affected by the rising cost of vegetables. Traders in Nugegoda say they cannot sell vegetables at the rate in which they buy them. 
Many customers are returning home empty handed. Did the Sri Lankan government actually sign an agreement with New Fortress Energy Inc. for the Keravalapite Yugadanvi power plant? Leader of the National People's Power, Anura Kumar Disanayaka, made an explosive revelation in Parliament today. Let's take a listen. The cabinet paper only grants approval to enter into an agreement with New Fortress Energy. However, who have they signed it with? The agreement was signed with NFE Sri Lanka Power Holding LLC. The agreement was signed not with the company that the cabinet gave the green light for. This company is listed as 1206 Orange Street, Washington DC, 19811, United States of America. The Sri Lanka Holdings Company is registered in the US. This is purely misleading the Cabinet of Ministers. Article 13 forward slash 1 clearly states, this agreement cannot be declared to the people for a period of two years without the consent of both parties involved in the agreement. The assets of this country were never passed down to the Finance Minister or Finance Secretary Artigala. Therefore, the people have the right to know anything and everything regarding agreements that are signed with regard to national assets. The article states that the agreement can only be disclosed if the United States firm agrees. Why should there be such a clause? Article 3.2 says any future agreement should be signed in favour of NFE Sri Lanka Holdings. It is now clear why this agreement was never disclosed. The Finance Ministry and the Secretary, who assume that they are heirs to the national assets, have signed this agreement without disclosing it to the Parliament or the people. This agreement is now tabled in Parliament so that it can be disclosed to the people and the MPs. New Fortress Energy You spoke about the New Fortress deal. You tabled the agreement in Parliament. As a government, we have submitted it to the courts as well. We know how you received the agreement as well. Therefore, there is nothing to hide here. We are being open. We wish to ask you to point out a single question that we haven't answered in Parliament as the government. We wish to say that there is no need to handle this secretly. During an interview with News First, the CEB Engineers Union made the following revelations on the agreement. The money is to be distributed under Stage 1 and Stage 2 that have not been signed or seen by anyone. I have a soft copy of that. Under Stage 1, 157 out of the 187 million US dollars will be received after certain conditions are met. One condition is that the Sri Lankan government must set up an LNG gas company. We must agree to allow New Fortress Company to take over that company. That will be signed in the future. Stage 2 applies to all power plants in Sri Lanka. It says that New Fortress Company must be the authority on supplying LNG. That is when the remaining $63 million would be given. The one that we saw has been signed. The chairman of our institution has signed as a witness. An additional secretary at the ministry has also signed this as a witness. The CEO of the New Fortress Company has signed this. The finance secretary told the president that any financial transaction has not happened so far. They will ask us to convert all power plants to LNG. There is a main shipping route in the southern seas. If we build a terminal, we can engage in a good business of supplying LNG to those ships. The Sri Lanka Navy continues to render a yeoman service to protect the sea of Sri Lanka. It is now celebrating 71 years of unwavering dedication and service to the nation. News First, file this report.
The Navy Act No. 34 of 1950 marked the beginning of the regular naval force of Sri Lanka with the establishment of Royal Ceylon Navy on the 9th of December 1950. The Royal Ceylon Navy, which has grown steadily since then, became the Sri Lanka Navy on the 22nd of May 1972 when the country became a republic. During the Second Elam War, the Navy rendered an untiring service to protect Sri Lanka's waters in the northern and eastern regions while fulfilling their duties to the utmost. The Sri Lanka Navy that has grown in strength to withstand any insurmountable challenges that may arise in local or regional waters is now celebrating its 71st anniversary. The invaluable services rendered by the Navy in the humanitarian operation launched to wipe out terrorism from Sri Lanka will never be forgotten in the hearts of the Sri Lankan people. Apart from protecting Sri Lanka's maritime borders, the Navy has also remained committed to protect the people. They continue to protect Sri Lanka's population of more than 21 million as they guard the Sea of Sri Lanka that extends for about 65,610 square kilometers or 200 nautical miles and is eight times the country's landmass. Today as well, the Sri Lanka Navy's capital ships were on display of the golf face green. Sri Lanka has attracted majority of its international attention because of its strategic location and the geopolitical importance. Sri Lanka is also often referred as the Pearl of the Indian Ocean. And the Sri Lanka Navy, the first line of defense of our country that protects the sea of Sri Lanka is celebrating its 71st anniversary. And as you can see behind me, vessels belonging to the Sri Lanka Navy are anchored off the shores of Goldface Green for the display for public. Now, if you're passing through Goldface Green, you can also take a look at the proud fleet of the Sri Lanka Navy. Now, at the same time, we must highlight that the Sri Lanka Navy is still continuing to actively engage in their duties to protect the sea of Sri Lanka. Demonstrating the strength of the Sri Lanka Navy, SLNS Gajabahu, an advanced offshore patrol vessel, SLNS Samudra, medium endurance cutter, SLNS Sayurala, an advanced offshore patrol vessel, as well as the gallon SLNS Nandimitra were on display. As the sun set in the country, marking the end of another day, the illuminated ships of Sri Lanka Navy displayed the 71-year pride of the forces. The country salutes the Navy for its dedicated commitment to the country's security under the guidance of Navy Commander, Vice Admiral Nishantha Ulugetanna. The Sri Lanka Navy stands ready to protect the Sea of Sri Lanka, regardless of any challenges that may befall this country. Making international headlines tonight, Nicaragua became the latest country to cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of China. Nicaragua announced today that it has cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of China. El gobierno de la República de Nicaragua the People's Republic of China is the only legitimate government that represents all of China and Taiwan is an inalienable part of the Chinese territory. The government of the Republic of Nicaragua today is breaking diplomatic relations with Taiwan and will cease any contact or official relationship. Y deja de tener cualquier contacto o relación oficial. Taiwan said it was deeply saddened and that Nicaragua had disrespected many years of friendship. China has tried every means to isolate Taiwan and the people of our country must unite to prevent Taiwan from being isolated by the international community. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hua Shangying praised Nicaragua's decision. In a tweet, she called it the right choice in line with the global trend. After 21 years, China resumed diplomatic ties with Nicaragua hours after it cut ties with Taiwan. The two countries signed a joint statement announcing the resumption of ties. Taiwan's list of international allies has dwindled from 21 down to 14 since President Tsai Ing-wen took office in May of 2016. 
The hippo spirit vessel was the most recently discussed topic involving ties between Sri Lanka and China. The hippo spirit carrying Chinese organic fertilizer that was rejected by Sri Lanka reached Singapore this morning. The deputy general manager of China's Qingdao Seawin Biotech Group Company Limited, Anna Song, said fertilizer samples from the hippo spirit were directed to the laboratory of SGS Switzerland in Singapore. The hippo spirit carrying the rejected Chinese fertilizer left Sri Lankan waters on the 4th of December after more than 70 days of moving around the country. The purpose of the hippo spirit heading to Singapore was to test samples and go for arbitration. China's Qingdao Seawin Biotech Group Company Limited has demanded 8 million US dollars in compensation from Sri Lanka including production and shipping costs. They have argued that Sri Lanka had violated the deal to purchase organic fertilizer. The compensation has been sought from Colombo Commercial Fertilizers Limited to the arbitration center in Singapore. Why did the Chinese ship go to Singapore for arbitration? Agriculture Minister Mahindananda Aludgambage said this was because of an error in the agreement. Who is at fault? The Agriculture Minister said he had instructed the Ministry Secretary to insert a clause in the agreement stating that any arbitration would take place in Sri Lanka. However, that instruction had not been followed. Out of the two agreements signed to purchase fertilizer, the agreement signed with Colombo Commercial Fertilizers Limited says that an arbitration must be settled in Singapore. China's Qingdao Seawin Biotech Group Company Limited says that Sri Lanka must pay arbitration costs and also pay interest on the 8 million US dollar compensation. The ministers and officials who are at fault will have to settle the compensation using the funds of the people. The agriculture minister and the attorney general had earlier agreed to increase the deposit made to the Chinese company from 5 million US dollars to 8 million US dollars and to pay 75% of the amount mentioned in the letter of credit issued by the People's Bank. But the situation now is different. China's Qingdao Seawin Biotech Group Company Limited that sent the fertilizer has continued to issue warnings over the conduct of Sri Lanka and its banks. In a statement issued yesterday, the company said Sri Lanka could be abandoned by the international community and blacklisted by international traders. The Chinese company told News First it has complained to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization and the International Plant Protection Convention, seeking their intervention into this problem. Incidentally, Sri Lanka had to pay millions of rupees in compensation for violating the oil hedging deal in 2009. Ultimately, it is the innocent people who will have to bear the brunt of these losses. While public funds are at risk of being spent on paying compensation, people are facing rising challenges due to the rising cost of living. A shortage of goods had arisen in the market recently after supplies of some commodities like vegetables and rice had dropped because of the lack of fertilizer. Those were the woes of farmers in Padikaramadua in Gallin Bidanueva. They began cultivating corn about one and a half months ago. But farmers say their crops aren't growing as there is no fertilizer. This is the Kudigama village in Munragala. Although farmers have cultivated corn across more than 500 acres of fields, their crops haven't grown well. Authorities began distributing liquid fertilizer and another type of fertilizer to be used across 1,200 acres in Kaudulla, Polandarwa. But some farmers refused to accept liquid fertilizer. MOP fertilizer containing potassium and liquid fertilizer were distributed today, but they aren't giving nano nitrogen. The order of the fertilizer is unbearable. Farmers are asking how they should apply this. Chili plants aren't growing properly. Earlier when they announced that fertilizer is being distributed, crowds of farmers gathered together and lined up outside the storage facility. But today farmers don't trust the product. They have manufactured a liquid using the waste from dogs and fish. And they are asking us to use 3 litres for an acre. The Rajanganya Farmers Front convened a media briefing in Anuradhapura today. The army has been entrusted with agriculture. 
What sort of mockery is this? We don't know whether they are trying to intimidate farmers by entrusting agriculture with the army. Five fertilizer bags used in a two-acre land cost 60,000 rupees. Pesticides cost 35,000 rupees. Then it costs 50,000 rupees to till the ground. But at what cost can we sell a kilo of paddy or rice? We took to the streets demanding fertilizer. Next, we will take to the streets demanding food. The Ceylon Teachers Union says the ministries of agriculture, health and education are facing the threat of militarization. We saw the KDU bill in the recent past. There were massive protests across the country based on the fact that the education of the country will be privatized and militarized. Against such a backdrop, the president goes to the Kotalawal Defense University and says that higher education must be privatized and a methodology must be in place to earn foreign revenue through higher education in Sri Lanka. We saw how the health ministers were changed and the army commander was appointed to control the spread of COVID-19. Although it was fully militarized, was the pandemic curbed successfully? Impractical proposals were brought into the agriculture sector as well. The government made the farmers take to the streets and completely destroyed the agriculture sector of the country. The reasons behind this are the wrong policies of this government and the wrong advice given to them. We wish to ask the president whether he is trying to do the same to the education sector as well. The appeal court today ordered that the petition seeking an order instructing the IGP and the Attorney General to take legal action against the gas companies and those involved in importing and distributing unsafe gas cylinders will be taken up for consideration on the 14th of this month. The judge bench had ordered the petitioner to ensure, uh, issue rather notices on the respondents. The lawyers representing the Attorney General and Love's Gas Company told the court that they hope file they hope to file limited objections over the petition. While an issue, while a solution is being sought for this issue, gas explosions had occurred in several areas today as well. A gas cooker had exploded at a house in Batadua in Gaul when cooking meals. No one was injured in the incident. A gas explosion had occurred at a house in Kiralogama in Tamutegama. The occupants said the explosion occurred when boiling water to prepare tea. A gas cooker had also exploded at a house in Burunnava in Warakapala last night. The explosion had occurred a few minutes after turning off the stove. A gas cooker had exploded at a house in Sarasivagama in Peradine last night. A correspondent reported that the explosion occurred when making tea. The cylinder involved in the explosion had a red label pasted on it. Making headlines tonight, President Gota Be Rajapaksa instructed the Committee on COVID-19 Control to take necessary steps to complete administering booster doses within the next two weeks to control the spread of COVID-19 during the upcoming festive season in the country. The Committee has also decided to make it mandatory to be in possession of the vaccination card in public places in the future. All those who have completed three months after receiving the second dose are eligible to receive the Pfizer vaccine as the booster dose. Accordingly, eligible persons have the opportunity to receive the Pfizer vaccine from tomorrow at any vaccine centre. The approval has been received to administer the second dose for children between the ages of 16 and 19 and the first dose for children between the ages of 12 and 15. Accordingly, the President instructed to devise plans in collaboration with the Ministry of Education to immediately provide the vaccine. The President also instructed to further relax the restrictions imposed on tourism, taking into account the development of the tourism sector. Indian Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat, who was killed along with his wife in a helicopter crash near Kunur in Tamil Nadu on Wednesday, were cremated with fully military honours in De New Delhi. Home Minister Amit Shah, National Security Advisor Ajit Dawal and Congress Leader Rahul Gandhi were among several leaders to lay wreaths and pay respect to Bipin Rawat and his wife Madhulika Rawat at their official residence in Delhi this morning before cremation. Sri Lankan Army Commander General Shavendra Silva also flew to New Delhi representing the country to attend the cremation and pay his respects. 
His daughters Kritika and Tarini performed Rawat and his wife Madhulika's last rites. As per protocol, General Rawat was accorded a 17-gun salute at his funeral, where 800 service personnel were in attendance. Post the playing of the last post and roused by tri-service buglers, the funeral pyre was lit by family members. Reverend Father Jude Krishanta, the media director of the Archdiocese of Colombo, filed a complaint with the Criminal Investigations Department with regard to the April 21st attacks. A statement made by Minister Prasanna Ranatunga recently was the base for the complaint. Recently, Minister Prasanna Ranatunga made a statement noting that former President Maitri Palasirisena must be held responsible for the Easter attacks on the basis that he allowed for the tragedy to take place. He said that legal action must be taken against the former President. It's been six to seven days since the statement was made, but we did not see him being questioned about it. Why are they not taking legal action against former President Maitripala Sivisena? He says that the two-thirds majority is in their hands and that the power will be lost if they defect. Therefore, it is clear to us that the President, Prime Minister and the government are not serving justice to the victims of the Easter attacks because they want to secure the two-thirds power. The central bank has warned four money changes for exchanging currency at high rates. It comes amidst attempts to crack down on using informal channels to send money from overseas. The central bank said it is conducting spot examinations at authorized money changers. This is to ensure that they exchange foreign currency at the rates offered by banks. In a statement, the central bank said it will cancel permits of four money changes if they don't follow the directive. The money changers were found to have violated the directives during spot examinations in November and December. Opposition MP Harsha De Silva has criticized these moves. The banks started buying and selling at higher rates. Then they cracked down and they said you can only pay 203 and then buy at 199. Obviously, those are not market clearing rates. And that is why people had to go to the black market and purchase at whatever the price that the money exchangers were selling, which is, as we know, it was yesterday, at 240 rupees to the dollar. Nobody could really say this is the right price. The market will have to determine the right price. Recently, the central bank said it will take strict action against sending money through informal channels. It said migrant workers overseas are sending money to the country through illegal methods as it has a higher exchange rate. Today, Gama embarked on a drinking water project that would benefit the people of Kanda Hindagama in Ampara. The village of Kandahindagama in the Ampara district is home to about 215 families. For several years, drinking water problems have affected about 300 students who attend Dhamma school and their families. Today, Gamadha took the initiative to construct a water purification plant and a water well to address this long-standing need. The project is funded by Harsha Dias, a resident of Koswatha, while the Navy would provide technical assistance. That's a wrap of the news. Thank you for watching and good night.